Hi everyone and welcome back. So now it's the next video. In the last video, we talked a little bit about Express, Express Generator, how to bootstrap a simple application. You can add uh, some utility libraries or uh, packages to make it production ready and you can build your APIs. That will also become a microservice. Let's say you can build a, some kind of a small rating system or a CRUD operations exposing the REST interface. But what is the right way? I mean, we saw where we can add uh, 12 factor principles. I'm talking about express TypeScript here. I mean, uh, now these are not the days where you can just write a simple express app. We need to have TypeScript there. It's a must, must have. I mean, you cannot just say, okay, we don't need to use TypeScript. We just go ahead with a simple JavaScript. No, you obviously need to have a TypeScript. Either you are doing a front end or a back end. So what is going to change? You need to define the types for whatever you do. I mean, you are you will be writing uh, middlewares, routers, controllers, services, validators. Everywhere you need to specify the types. And uh, all those most of the libraries also supports the TypeScript definitions like uh, debug, jest, uh, class validator, body parser, cookie parser. All these different libraries you will be adding. So there are two ways. Either you build create uh, from ground zero or use some baseline template because most of the developers use the baseline templates to start before they start with uh, their project so i will suggest you can use your baseline template so what is a baseline template if you have it already otherwise you can just use these generators Generator Node Express TypeScript API is it even providing uh, lots of things on top of what it is doing. I will try to use this thing and then I will get rid of the dependencies and I will try to see what we can use. So here is my application. I will install both these modules and then it's like a U generators. I mean, it was a popular tool uh, when we were generating these scaffolding in the front end during Angular 1.x. So let's use it and then uh, we'll just ch check the folder structures. If we like it, we will keep it and we'll remove the dependencies which we don't need. We will add our own dependencies, our own uh, structures and we can upgrade uh, the dependencies we need. Okay, so now it is adding the dependencies and after that we will just create uh, use this command to create this application and what it contains packages and node one in source we have a components auth user config route swagger i mean you can also build these kind of generators and publish it to npm so others can use it i think this is uh, this is has more downloads you can also use this one it's all saying whatever you use so would you like to root name to be called uh, let's say express ts app this is what i wanted to call this project okay i want to use uh, jwt auth secret key can be anything and i will just talk on this code so we have these i'm talking about this particular project it's better if I open the right project by going inside this. Okay, this is the project I'm talking. So what has been added uh, from Express generator to the TypeScript? Now we have this TS config, which is a compiler configuration. So and we are writing .ts file everywhere. You can see .ts, index.ts and all. So I will just try to close all those things. So now we are writing from .js to we are writing .ts and either you can run the applic whole application by running the .ts file or you can just use the ts config as a compiler tsc compiler and get .js file and then for production you can just do node index.js on dev you can still use ts node uh, index.ts that is a, your development you can use a node mode simple command and specify the node mode.json file which contains the execution i mean which contains how to compile the typescript and run it on the fly 
so I think we also have a node mount or JSON here and it is using TS node you can see we need, it will TS node will keep uh, running the server and it will watching the source directory and it will be running this index.ts as a main file okay now if you see the structure I oh it this is okay is not uh, that much I don't want it to use uh, this ESLint JSON which it contains I will try to change it to convert it to my own JSON file so this is a simple boilerplate right uh, because we created this through some external project I mean we can run this npm install but it has lots of dependencies which I don't want okay TypeScript I can upgrade Swagger is fine Mocha I don't need ESLint Chai I don't need and super test I will use a different ways of doing it helmet express ejs dot env all the other dependencies we need bcrypt cookie parser body parser dot env ejs we are not using but still keep it mongoose we are using mongodb database eslint is 8.6 so we may need to upgrade the eslint a little bit so these are all eslint uh, plugins and we are using eslint.json JS doc to generate a documentation, node mount, source map loader. Main dependencies we have Mongoose, TS node. TS node should not be a dependency, it should be a dev dependencies. So I will remove it and put it here. And bcrypt, body parser, compression, course express, helmet, joey, mongoose, util, json web token. Yeah, these dependencies we need. So there is no issues with that test I will just use a jest for it so I will install all the required dependencies and here skip lib check uh, we can have a ts config file for that so let's try to add the required stuff for this right so what all things we need I need a jest config so I will just try to import that jest config here I'm targeting the .json.ts file eslintrc.js either you can have a .js .json or .eslintrc I will have my own eslintrc which I'm using standard on all my project I will try to add uh, the basic files which are related to prettier or eslint okay I can just add that so that's nothing but a ESLint RC file which requires ESLint recommended because now we are writing a TypeScript code so I can add all the dependencies of ESLint with the Prettier we have Prettier RC and a Prettier ignore ESLint RC ESLint ignore so what I will do is I will create I will add the dependencies which we need for the ESLint and the Prettier so I will try to combine all of these together inside package JSON go to the dev dependencies these are the ESLint right I will replace my own ESLint configurations this is the parser ESLint 8.28 I'm using because if you mix with the versions here your ESLint won't work I don't need this generator anymore now what are the other dependencies we need a ESLint a commit lint configuration so I will try to add the commit lint I am not explaining these again because we have already discussed all these things in the code baseline so the first video we did where we talked about the code baseline there we have covered uh, to add the husky to add all the, the required dev dependencies for our project I have I am adding commit lint and there is a commit lint config also I need to add we can have even ts config also we can have multiple ts configs one ts config for the build one for the test and all so this is ts config we will see what change we need to do in the ts config because these are the compiler options which you are passing for your project and your project can be nest js koa happy express typescript and all and then i need a husky so i can just copy the husky husky has these hooks uh, pre-commit hooks npm run lint npm run prettier so we need 
these hooks uh, in our project added npm run lint and npm run prettier so i will just try to add those uh, packages and scripts from my previous baseline right and now i will do npm install to get everything ready so we added husky also so we need to add a husky as a dependency husky and jest i will try to add as a dependency as a dev dependency okay then we have a ts jest and typescript typescript 4.9 i will upgrade this version so we are using 4.5 ts jest 17.0 t and jest we are using 17.4 so we are good kind of and here we got ESLint already 8.28 and now I'm good I can just remove the package log file which is not there already I can just hit npm install and wait for the execution to be over I can start running npm run lint and it's complaining bin prettier does not exist so let's see do we have prettier already added Okay, I think the prettier dependency is not there. So let's add it 2.8.6 as a dev dependency. Or you can just install npm install minus minus c minus dev. And we can specify the version you wanted to install 2.8.6. So we are adding a dev dependency and then we are doing lint and it works right so we can just do npm run prepare to configure the husky for the project it's already uh, first of all github uh, git repository should be initialized or what we can do is git init okay repository initialized and we can just write a simple prepare script to install the husky go to the top in the script I, okay it's already there I can just do npm run npm run prepare and uh, husky go, uh, hooks are installed git status why there is uppercase already caps lock getting pressed again and again let's say I'm adding a readme file and I'm doing git commit minus m And let me check okay code pre-commit hook executed with one or get to run prettier so i will just run the prettier first npm run prettier right so it will fix the the files for me i will add all the files git commit minus m okay now it is checking the formatting and it is also enabling the these uh commit conventions all these modules are coming into picture because if you can see here in the hook what we are doing is npm run lint and npm run prettier and for preparing the commit message we are using this uh, commit convention and here I can say is init baseline and here you can see my log get log okay and then you can push it now let's uh, try to do npm runs uh, build do we have these commands somewhere in the package json we have these scripts npm run build npm run uh, you can watch it you can watch the files also i think we have a node mon json somewhere okay so if i want to do a dev I can have a simple I can specify node moon command so node moon should look into this file and it knows what to execute npm run dev so it is using node moon and there is an issue okay we need to fix this looks like some type script error let me start it normally if it works npm run start 
10 pm run okay there is no start command right now so when you do the ts command it will build give build and it will give you those dot js files so how can you check if it really working the project then you can go to the build inside build you have a config server and then there is a server.js file so this is how you are starting your server and i don't think uh, it is doing anything starting the express app listening to the port okay we need to do an index.js instead of this because this is the main file and pipe is already in use okay i can just kill this process on 3000 kill minus 9 okay now it will it should try to run the project now i can just try if it works is it giving me something not found so there should be some routes it has created we can test those like in the index route v1 users i'm just playing so it is just saying some errors is authenticated at least so now it is hitting the apis right now we are getting some response and apis are getting triggered okay now because there is no database connection that's why it has broken it has terminated the whole process so what we need to do is to get these set up properly we need to have a database configuration this is our env it is looking for mongodb uri uh, this database mongodb mean what it is doing with this mongodb uri i think that is a database name database name it will create automatically we can just provide a docker compose and docker compose uh, yml so it will spin up the mongodb container for us so we can either you already have a mongodb somewhere running on your host operating system or you can just use docker compose yml to spin up the container so now what i did is i have a simple docker compose yml file that is nothing but okay it will help you to spin up the mongodb container it will expose this port so when i when you do docker compose up it will give you the container app and running and then you can connect to this so i'm doing this again and i'm connected to the mongodb that's good thing okay now mongodb we are connected we should be able to access the api so what are the apis are in this uh which i really don't know so let's try to explore them so there is a doc there is an auth api v1 users api v1 auth so this is the auth router which contains sign up and login let's try to access this document route there is a docs route or is there any root path is added port secret okay routes dot any tab i'm just trying to see the code Move middleware we have uh, we are configuring routes dot in it so these are the two app dot use auth router so it is a post api and this is also the post api And in the login it is doing a couple of things so let's try to because this is the boilerplate code we need to just play with this so here you can see my application is running on this and there is the auth login so let's try to see what is the other route auth register let's say so we'll go to the route server and here is index inside auth Oh, this is a little confusing create user we need to trigger 
server and routes these are the user routes so for registration we need to hit router.get id delete id auth routes so it's a login and then one is a sign up in sign up what you are asking is let's try to see that will be inside a validation what are the required parameter so here you can see password email create user email and the password so here my endpoint is sign up and i will do email okay so i just test entered the engine.com okay it has given me this token so sign in is successful i mean this is how the apis are designed uh, i would but in my case i what i would have done is just create a user and then you can just do the login this is sign up and this is login i think that is the endpoint name sign in successful so this is how the basic implementation is right and then uh, i think we need to pass this token i can just copy this token because if you read the code we have two routes auth router and user router and user router is using one middleware which i need to see jwt auth which is expecting you to pass x access token okay let's pass x access token and then you can access the user routes In the user routes we see find all okay let's do this i will just create a duplicate of this I'll rename it. So inside user API, we need to pass this XE API token, which is there in this code. Okay, there is a middleware which is deciding all those things. And okay, now my API is like user API. So I will be passing X access token, and this is the value of X access token which I have copied from here let's copy this put this here it's not a bearer token you are not prefixing it with the bearer this is what the code is written in the boilerplate okay I, I didn't wrote this code and I can even they, they are returning with the password that's a totally dumb right so you can create a multiple users you can create a so you can create a post you can delete a user so this is auth API I can create a post login sign up. You can create a multiple users. And I'm already using this. So I got this. It's like a simple implementation. I won't go into the code because I think there are lots of issues with this code. It's just a boilerplate. But if you look into this folder structure and all, that's what we need to learn from, right? We have environment variable dot env is coming from here. All these environment variables are populated in the process dot env, like the port, uh, node environment, MongoDB URI, the secret or zero secret, which we are using in the middleware to validate the token which is being passed in the headers. And these are your components. I mean, that's on you how you define your folder structure. You can create a controller services. Uh, routes, utilities, configuration. So here you can create a lib, right? Utilities and we already have a database, but I would suggest we should have created something like this database and models. Then you can create a routes. Routes is already there. You could have done controllers services this is like a 
typical MVC design where you are keeping the, the consistent folder structure and knows what is happening. Okay. And I mean, this application is right now working. We added uh, commit lint configurations, uh, Husky, Hook, ESLint RC, Prettier. So Prettier is now uh, perfectly working fine. But uh, I think when I'm running this npm run dev, I think still there is an issue I need to check. Okay, resolve reference directory like for wrapping. I can stop this because currently I'm running it on uh, the output build folder. That should not happen for the development, right? We should be able to run the TypeScript code on the fly so that we can do the change and it automatically reload npm run dev. Let's try to fix this, what it is saying. Okay, so this stack overflow, my friend told me, upgrade TS node, fix the issue, TS node 10.8.0. This is 10.8.0 and I'm doing npm run dev. It is starting my server. Connection MongoDB connected, connection open. And now, I mean, I'm not doing proper logging. So obviously you can have logger here. We can use a Winston logger, Morgan logger and all. So when we talk about the 12 factor principles, it's all about how you can orchestrate or how you can build a tiny microservice having all different concepts in, in added to it, like following a proper MVC, adding a logger, have managing all the environments and populating the environment, segregating or isolating the environment variables, managing the database connections. So it's a, you can call that as a production ready and you can deploy that on EC2, Lambda or anywhere you want. That is our final goal from this uh, first module of building services in Express TypeScript and, and using NestJS. So currently this works fine, even in the dev it works uh, using Node Moon or we can also run it using Node. First of all, npm run build that is using tsc command and looking into ts config and giving us the output build folder and we can run the node app like this also. And how would you know what port and all that is all defined here. We can create env.example also. To let everyone know that these are your environment variables which you need to use. Okay, Docker Compose, this is the additional file we have, Node Moon, package JSON, all the required package scripts. I think we don't have a just config, but we have. So you can just do npm run test. Currently, we don't have any test cases added. So what we can do is we can create a test directory. And inside this, you can just create a unit test, integration tests and all appspec.ts similarly you can collect the coverage using this command tsc coverage okay tsc is like very extensive library sorry jest because here we are using jest to get the to run the test and just ts jest because we are writing typescript code and then you can add the scripts to test the code here you can also add a deployment script and all. So this is the build, dev, start. Now, this is really simple, right? But how you deploy these applications to the production environment? There is always a good approach and popular libraries are there. You can install the PM2. PM2 and you can create a multiple instance of a single service if, you're, if your EC2 instance is a multi-core, right? You have 4 GB and 2 core, then you can easily have a two instance of this service so that it can scale uh, e peacefully, right? So you can use uh, PM2, which is a process manager for the Node.js. First of all, you can install that globally and same thing you have to do wherever you are uh, running this application and PM install minus C PM2. Okay, once it is globally installed, you can use PM2 Docker, PM2 Runtime Environment, PM2 Dev npm run build I will do because we will be running the build environment and then I can do pm2 dev start okay there is a long uh, file we need to traverse build config server index.js right so what is what pm2 is doing pm2 is just, pm2 is just starting your server and here you can specify the number of instance and all those things 
you can specify the name even pm2 monit is the command pm2 list there are many commands now pm2 is installed globally you can run all these things pm2 list I mean there should be one process running already what happened to this pm to start okay it should be pm to dev is it something like this pm to list should give me the the list of instances it's running already right process started and even i can uh, hit the apis okay it's not running so let me check ignore folder app started index so pm2 is starting my application okay maybe i was executing a different command pm2 dev and here you can get the pm2 logs also pm2 list also i mean pm2 dev i maybe misspelled it it's pm2 pm2 start even you can do minus i i need to run two instance of this whole application so how you can do is build inside build you have routes okay build config config server and there is index.js so script already launched pm to list i mean uh, there is a command pm to stop zero so it will stop this or pm to I don't know like all these commands pm to kill should do this pm to monet pm to restart pm to remove I mean I just wanted to delete this process right so pm to restart even you can do pm to monet if you want to restart this pm to restart zero and now you can just pm to list pm to logs pm2 is just like a process manager which is actually managing the processes i mean you can uh, i wanted to kill this pm2 process let me see the command that is pm to delete now pm to start minus i i can create a four instance of this application which i'm calling pm to start minus i build config I don't like this directory structure but now it has created you can see the four instances and you can see so this is how you can manage your process instance let's say you have four core you can create a four instance and you can track them like now you can do pm to monit also that is used to monitor all the process instance how the memory heap memory and how they are progressing okay so that's all about uh, simple TypeScript application. We will add lots of other things. Till now, I think the Docker may be something new for you. Docker file to spin up the MongoDB container and connect to that. .env we have used Jest and all these utility libraries for ESLint, uh, for Husky, CommitLint, Commit Convention, Prettier RC, uh, and Jest, Jest Config, NodeMone. All these are the, the core dependencies we have used, but this is the application. Now you can extend these API platform to your own way. I, I, I didn't explain the code. There is no need. It's just a routes and then it is just a MongoDB models to insert, update, delete operations it is performing. And then there is a simple middleware. It has added, like if you have seen, there was some middleware, right? Uh, if I can see. UWT auth. It's a simple middleware. It is checking that if you are accessing the protected routes, then are you authorized? So this is authenticated middleware has been added in somewhere in the code like here. So this particular route, this particular path can be accessed only by those users who are carrying the valid uh, authentication token, XAPI token or something. And this is auth router, which is public route, which you can use for login and register that will give you the access token okay uh, i finally i wanted to try one more small thing so okay we already have a instance already running right and all are running on port so is it running on 3000 port i mean this is what i wanted to show because we were using uh, some libraries for swagger also 
so you can see this is the end point which is which was coming with the boiler plate uh, and this is how it was generating the apis swagger definitions we were defining on before the controllers and it is generating a swagger dock and we already using swagger ui npm modules so when you are hitting a docs it is giving you this nice and clean uh, apis and here i can play with this thing i can do the sign up and i got this access token so this is how you will be playing with swagger docs and i can authorize this i can add this close and i can start accessing the protected apis which are these uh, i didn't get the response no token provided okay so that means here you can see the token is not being passed so swagger uh, definition is not proper here it is expecting the authorization token here i mean i don't know why it became empty authorize and now if i try again okay it's going sorry you can see x api token x access token and you can see the data is coming now so this is how you can create a the new user all sort of stuff uh, we can do duplicate entry because i'm passing the same name and same EA, same email all these things should be handled at the api level if like how we are throwing the exceptions how we are handling the errors that's what a production ready api is not just uh, some random chunks we are throwing and now here i can just pass some ids like this is the id object id and i wanted to get this user i can get it that's it so this is like a swagger doc which you can use and it's always good to have a swagger api specifications for your apis so that front end developer can understand okay these are the endpoints he need to hit this is the payload this is the post put get delete patch api endpoints so it's easy for communication and integration also uh, that's it guys thanks everyone thanks for watching